place in the middle of the war, 1812. The British army was advancing through the south and they were very close to attacking the White House. The president had to escape the White House so that the British army would not capture him. Okay. You must leave now with your family for your safety. Tell my wife it's time to pack. Yes, I will. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, but it's time for you to leave. What? Why? I'm not afraid. Because the British... Wait. If the British are coming, then you must leave now. Okay. Boy Madison is... Oh. Is <laughs> one of the most beloved first ladies that America has ever had. When she was faced with the t this task of packing to run away from the White House, instead of packing clothing for money, Miss Madison ran over to the official portraits of the former president and took them out of the frame. She rolled them up and packed the paintings to bring with her because she didn't want that part of America history to be destroyed. President, sir, would you like to pick a oh, horse? Um, do you mind picking out one for me? Okay. This is the best one we've got. Okay. <laughs> what do I do? Can you show it? You've never ridden a horse before? No. Okay. Right here. Put your foot right here. And then you can get on. Okay. I'll <laughs> take this horse. Now start moving. Let's go. Now go. Let's go. 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 However, the guard sent a letter to mail it in order that the president should have, should have a place to rest because of his injury. They sent a letter to Mr. Caleb, Caleb Bentley, a, a prominent man in Brookville, Maryland. Dear Caleb Bentley, President Madison must stay at your house as he travels to New York. Kindly make arrangements for one week. Please set up everything for the president. We will bring you a horse and a wagon to help you move out if you need to. Also, please bring a doctor. Sincerely, President Madison's guards and Dolly Madison. Wow, what an honor! I have to go get ready. Caleb spent the night getting ready for the president. Awesome. Action. Stop. Welcome, Mr. President. Would you like a tour of the house? I think I need to see a medic. <laughs> what can you see? Two fingers. Thank goodness! What happened, Mr. President, sir? Can you see my hands? I fell off my horse on the way to Maryland. <laughs> Mr. Bentley, may I stay here until I'm wet? <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> until I'm well enough? <laughs> you look like you're trying to kill him. <laughs> Just Second. Go. Start again really loud. Still today, Brookville, Maryland is very proud of their history of capital for a day. Actually, Madison and his cabinet held president meeting in Mr. Bentley's home for about three days before he continued on journey north. The president went about his usual business, singing, signing bills, and consulting with his team. The, then the president traveled to New York, where he stayed until the American army won the War of 1812. Most people know that the U.S. Capitol was in Philadelphia, in New York, and in Washington, D.C. But ma many people did not know that the Capitol also was in Maryland.
The year was 1812, and America and England were at war again. The Americans fought to capture British forts in the north and west. The British responded by attacking American forts and creating blockades of ships so that goods could not get in or out. Baltimore, Major George Armistead was in charge of the American fort, Fort McHenry. Fort McHenry was shaped like a star with large cannons at each point and guarded the city of Baltimore and the surrounding countryside. <laughs> to make a flag bigger than any of them that you saw. I want it to be 30 feet high, 42 feet wide. I'll fly it over, over to, all to, see, to all to see. I'm honored to sell this flag for you, but, but such a big flag will require more room. Pick your skill, ask and got permission to use a big warehouse in Baltimore to spread out her flag. She had to work at night when all the workers had gone, had gone home. So she and her daughter Caroline sewed by the light of oil lamps. Pause. These stars are so big, they're nearly two feet across. They'll certainly be seen from the harbor if the British come here. Mm -hmm. So then on well, Caroline, this, this flag must be very sturdy and strong. See, I have sewn the binding, binding twice so that it will not come off of the flagpole. Fifteen stars and stripes will wave over Fort McHenry soon. When the flag is finished, Major Armistead proudly raised it over Fort McKenna. All three of the winter and spring, the flag was waved, stiff, waved in a stiff breeze. Finally, in the summer of 1814, the British ships arrived in the harbor. And the Major knew that Baltimore was now part of the war. During the summer, there were many between Americans and the Dr. William Babins. But Dr. Beans himself <laughs> in a British room and taken as a <laughs> to the Manager Manager Armistead asked two men to go to the British Admiral and talk to him about we, we Seeing Dr. Beans. It was a dangerous mission, so the, he chose two brave men. Mr. John Skinner was in charge of prisoner exchanges with the British. Mr. Fr Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. Both men agreed to go. Oh. Before they left, Francis Scott Key took time to visit the British prisoners being held in the fort. He had them sign letters saying that Dr. Beans had been kind to them, to them and treated their wounds. He put the letters in his pocket and took them to show the British why they should release Dr. Beans. Sir, sir, this is the time for you to go to Dr. Beans. They will come with themselves to Dr. Beans' 
help them and change their rules. Then you can join us for a lot of things. Leon the Mr. Skinner and Mr. Keys made their way to the deck of the ship. From here, the fort looked far away, but they could see the large American flag still waving above the walls. While they were waiting, two sailors standing nearby began to talk to each other. Well, it won't be long till the battle begins. By this time tomorrow, Fort McKinnon will belong to us. The fort will never be able to survive the last of our cannon. Mr. Skinner and Mr. Keys were shocked to know that an attack would take place that very night. They must get back to the fort and warn their friends, but they could not leave until the Admiral had made his decision about releasing Dr. Beans. Soon the Admiral well, called for them. John Skinner, Princess Scott Key, and Dr. Bean stood on the deck of the ship. There was no way for them, them to send a warning. And they knew that Fort McHenry did not have enough soldiers to hold it out for very long. As the sun set that evening, they looked across the water to see the stars and stripes flying bravely over the fort. I wonder if we'll see that flag tomorrow or the British flag will fly in its place. Early the next morning, while it was still dark, the British. Finally, after finally after 25 hours, the battle smoke began to clear, and like the tired Americans rushed to the fort. Like, what can you see? Nothing yet. There's not enough light. The sun's coming up. And Zulu and I know how we fare. I think I see the flag. Yes, it is the flag. It's a American flag. It's flying over the fort. Fort McHenry has been defended. Fort McHenry has been defended. Yes. The Americans have won. The Americans have won. So they're on the deck of the British warship. On the morning of September 14, 1814, Francis Scott Key began to write the famous words for which it is still remembered. Go. Oh, say can you 